Hello and welcome to another Let's Eat Blind video because why not do them? They're fun, they're cheap to make. Actually, no they're not because the food is generally very expensive to buy. Well, at least this food was anyway. Got it from Tesco's from a very special section of the shop. Ooh, which will probably one day actually disappear considering how Tesco are deciding to streamline their business a bit now that they're really not the king of the retail market anymore. I mean, they still are. They've got the largest market share still, but it's diminishing slowly and they're losing money and now they're going to have to make loads of cuts to keep the business profitable. I don't know how it works. I don't care either. Point being is, is we're going to eat some food. No, I just got it from Tesco's. Um, now, I'm going to try and keep the camera as steady as possible because in the last Let's Eat Blind video, which was the tea cakes, I noticed that the camera was shaking all over the place. It's probably going to do so this time because I'm having to hold it in my hand. Uh, this is a phone camera, by the way. Uh, I don't have a proper stand to hold it steady. So forgive me if it is shaky, uh, but I'll do my best to reduce it. Anyway, let's stop stalling and let's get to the first food item of the video. Yay! Jack Link's Meat Snacks Beef Jerky Original! Ready to eat snack. Yay! Tasty thin strips of select beef. <gasps> select beef? My favourite kind of beef. Not like that unselected beef where you just look at it and you're like, mm, I'm not going to select you to eat because you're the unselected beef. That would be um, silly or something. I've lost my train of thought. Either way, select beef is the best beef. Seasoned and dried. Yep, beef jerky. Never actually had beef jerky before. Uh, and then I saw it in Tesco's uh, in the American food section. Yes, that might give you an idea as to some of the food we're going to eat in this video. Yes, this is an American snack food. Or at least I think it is anyway. Um, I know they quite like their beef jerky over there. Um, you don't really see it that much over here, to be fair. But um, uh, I thought, yeah, why not give it a shot? You know, I've seen it in so many American programs and cartoons, you know. Why not? Let's try this mythical and legendary food. So, it's original flavour. It's beef jerky, so I'm assuming original just means beef flavour. And uh, there's always some stuff on the bottom. Let's see if my camera can focus on the stuff at the bottom to see the stats. Uh, I don't think it wants to. Oh, oh, little, no, we've defocused. Oh dear. Right, let's put it on the table and let's see if it will focus. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's not focusing. Come on, camera, you can do it. Yay! Well done, camera. Right, so what have we got? We've got uh, 290 calories. That's 14.5% of your daily allowance. Okay, not too bad, I guess. 3.6%... Uh, uh, oh, wait, no, sorry. Uh, well, there's two calorie things here. There's 290 here, and then there's 72. I don't understand that. Okay, uh, there's some energy in here, at the very least. 1.2% fat, not too bad. 1.6% saturates. Yes, uh, fair enough. 4.3% uh, sugar, There's sugar and beef jerky, well, I guess that's probably part of the seasoning, and oh, 22% of what? I can't tell, let's zoom in a bit more, 22% <gasps> set, no wait, 22% salt, <gasps> wow, that's a lot of salt, and the snack pack is only 25 grams, oh my god, that's 25 grams of beef jerky has 22% of your daily salt allowance, wow, that's telling me that this is going to be quite a salty snack. Hmm. Oh, well, never mind. Right, let's see what it says on the back. Right, what have we got in the ingredient section? Tasty, thin strips of select beef, seasoned and dried. Yes, we already know that, but thank you for reminding me. Ingredients, beef, good to know. Sugar, okay, fair enough. Dried soy sauce, soybeans, salt, wheat. Okay, well, there you go. If you want to know what the uh, recipe is for soy sauce, there it is. Salt, corn syrup. Ah, corn syrup. Americans love corn syrup in their food for some reason. It's very popular. Probably is over here under a different name, but corn syrup. You don't see it very often on British food, but there you go. It's there, corn syrup. So not quite sure why I'm making a big deal out of it, but I don't know. I just happened to notice it's on a lot of American foods. Flavoring, hydro, hydro, hydrolyzed, hydro, hydrolyzed, hydrolyzed. That makes sense. Hydrolyzed corn protein with added hydrogen and hydrolyzed soy protein. I'm not quite sure what hydrolyzed means. I'm guessing it's got something to do with hydrogen or something. I really don't know. I've never actually looked it up. Maltodextrin, flavor enhancer, monosodium glutamate. Oh, monosodium glutamate. Oh, that's that stuff that makes you want to eat more of it. It's like a... Oh, it's like an additive they put in and it makes you, like, it gives you cravings for the food. Oh my god, I've actually seen the mythical and legendary monosodium glutinate. Uh, glutamate, even. Glutinate? Glutamate, there it is. Monosodium glutamate. Wow. 
I've repeated it so many times it's taken me by surprise. This is going to be interesting. Antioxidants, sodium, ethobate, nitric curing salt, blah, blah, blah. It takes 260 grams of beef for 100 grams of beef jerky. Okay, I, I'm assuming that the 260 grams of beef to make 100 grams of beef jerky is likely that the 260 grams of beef, most of that was water, and then you you cook it, shrink it down, and then it turns into 100 grams of beef jerky with the added seasoning. So it's really only 100 grams of beef and 160 grams of water or other stuff in it that just gets cooked or evaporated away even. I never quite understood why they ever say that, you know. It, it sounds impressive, but you think, well, how did you get it down from 260 grams to 100 grams? Either it's really dense, which doesn't really feel like it, or it might be, though, we don't know. Or you've just boiled all the water off when you were cooking it. Oh, who knows? I'm a nitpicking. Packed in a protective atmosphere, protected from all forms of threats, including terrorists, Keeps without refrigeration. Oh, that's annoying. I had this in the fridge the whole time. Oh, dear. Oh, well, at least we know now the next time not to put it in there. How we produce our beef jerky. Yes, please do tell me before I eat it. Right. Come on, camera. Focus. Focus, camera. Yay. Right, it's a bit wobbly. I do apologise. I'll try and keep it steady. I did say this before, but I can't guarantee it. We only use select rump beef. Oh, rump beef. That's the worst beef on the cow. Well, it's not the worst, but it's the roughest anyway. And it's also the toughest. So we only use select rump beef. Kind of suggests to me that it's the rump beef that you can't use after you've used the rest of it in steaks and burgers and stuff. And you've just gone, hmm, yes, we've got all this leftover beef from the rump side. Perhaps we can select that for our beef jerky. Yes, that sounds like a plan. Because, you know, select rump beef doesn't really actually specify quality in any way so okay cut into thin strips okay fair enough and then these are then seasoned carefully with our special family recipe using selected ingredients again you know if you're going to use ingredients in any recipe the best thing to do with them is to select them because if you don't then how do you know what ingredients to put into the thing without selecting them ah dilemma oh my god finally the thin beef strips are cooked Oh, I thought these were raw. Oh, disappointing. And then dried slowly because we couldn't be bothered to cook them because it's too expensive. In a traditional way, we leave them out back in the dumpster. <laughs> Carefully packed in protective atmosphere. Again, watch out for those terrorists. To guarantee best taste because terrorists ruin all forms of taste. By the way, they taste best when kept at room temperature. Oh, I put it in the fridge. Oh, well, it's warmed up a little bit, I guess. Oh, well. Right, what's the disclaimer at the bottom then? The small white absorber bag in the packaging is not suitable for consumption. Der kleine weiße Absorbito in der Wurpacken ist nicht zum Verzehr gegegnet. That's a really bad German pronunciation of the previous statement I said in English. Okie dokie then. Right, well, I've delayed it long enough. We've had a look at it. Packaging looks quite colourful, looks quite cheery. Uh, if I can just focus it a bit more. There we go. Um, yeah, it looks all right. But yeah, 25 grams. Not really a lot in this pack. And this pack cost a pound, by the way. Originally, it was £1.80 at Tesco's, but they've, uh, for some reason, put it in a sale because I guess nobody was buying it. Because £1.80 for this is really expensive. I know it's imported from America and most import foods are, exp uh, well, import foods are expensive, but Jesus. I mean, okay, a quid's still pretty steep, actually, but oh well. Never mind, we'll see if it's worth it. Right, so I'm going to cut it open with some scissors and then we shall check out the contents. Because I'm poor and povy, I can't afford a plate. So we're going to use white paper for this, just so then we can see it a bit better. Right then, let's get her out. Well, I'll tell you something. That wow, is that it? Jesus, that's, that's a pound's worth of beef jerky. Really? Damn, that's... That's not very much. Let's spread this out a bit. God, crikey. That was originally £1.80. Look how much you get. Blimey. That's that's pretty poor. Again, I know it's an import food, so it's usually more expensive due to taxes and shipping costs and what have you, but damn. Somebody really must have missed or wanted beef jerky imported, otherwise, why would you pay that much? Even a quid is still expensive, but oh well. Never mind. Let's stop nitpicking about the price. Ah, that must be the white lethal packet that you must not eat. It even says, do not something. Do not eat. There we go. Do not eat. It's ageless. Wait, what? Is that what it says? Yeah, ageless. All right, so if I eat it, I become ageless. Well, why would I not want to eat it? Yeah, ageless. Do not eat ageless oxygen absorber. Oh, right. Oh, I see. So it must stop the... It must just stop it from... Um, 
uh, reacting to atmosphere and stuff. In other words, it stops it from going off, I think, or stops it from rotting. Oh, cool, cool beans. Oh, I might keep that to one side then. I could do with actually, you know, ageless. I could do with age-proofing even, I should say. Perhaps if I do swallow it, then I'll stop aging and I can live a bit longer. <gasps> and they're telling us not to eat it because they know that's what happens if people do eat this. You do become immortal. <gasps> that's my immortal chassis for later. Right, never mind. Right, so let's have a look at it then. So... Um, pretty dark pieces of meat. I mean, beef is dark at the end of the day. Um, quite firm in the hand. A little bit rough in texture as well. Yeah, not much give way. Feels quite dense, actually. It doesn't feel very heavy, which I suppose is expected, but it does feel dense. All right, I'm going to give it a whiff. I can actually smell it from here. It smells all right. It smells of, um, I don't know. It smells very... It smells meaty, like cooked meats, like I suppose like really cold cooked meat, but also quite spicy and sweet. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's got like a spicy, sweet cooked meat taste, if you can picture that in your head. And like you say, it's not very good lighting in here, I do apologise, but yeah, it's just like very thin dried bits of beef. But it does feel rough and it feels quite dense. So I guess there's only one thing left to do, and that's to try it. Well... It's chewy. Um, hmm. It's got a, a very mild, spicy taste. Well, actually, no, not spicy, like a barbecue taste. Hmm. You know, it says original. It's got, it's got like a hint of barbecue. It's very sweet. I guess that's the seasoning. Probably salt and sugar and probably something else combined in it. Um, no, it's not as tough as I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, it's alright, actually. Um, it does dissolve in the mouth as well, after a while. Um, I can't really taste beef, though. I'll try another one. Hmm. At first, it's like chewing on what, if, what I would imagine would be chewing on leather would feel like. But it's got a nice sugary, salty taste to it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's sugar and salt. And some sort of, and probably that soy sauce. That's it, soy sauce. It's sugar, salt, and soy sauce. It says it on the back of the packaging. That's what it tastes like. But it's not a bad combination. I can't really taste the beef, though, other than its rough texture. I mean, it is rump steak, and rump steak is tough. But it does dissolve in the mouth really quickly, and when it does, it's very easy to cook. It's very easy to chew. It doesn't require that much effort as well. I'll try a big clump of it, so I've got a lot of it in my mouth, and then I can see if I can get a, a final evaluation before we move on to the next thing. Hmm. Yep. It's sweet. Tastes barbecue-y. It doesn't actually have that... It has got a salt taste to it, but it's like an undertaste. Um, it's chewy. And it does dissolve in the mouth. But other than that, it's not unpleasant. I actually quite like that. No, it's actually very, very tasty. Mmm. 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 Yeah. It's nice, and it doesn't. It does require a bit of chewing to begin with. But like I said, once the water, once the uh, your saliva gets into it, it becomes really, really easy. But there isn't that much of taste of beef. It really is the the overall flavour is salt, sugar, and the soy sauce, I guess, and it sort of combines to make some sort of barbecuey taste. So just imagine barbecue beef, basically. But the only thing you can taste is the barbecue flavour. The meat you can't really taste at all. But it's not unpleasant. Unless that's the monosodium glutinate, actually. <laughs> it's the monosodium glutinate is making me eat all the rest of it. Oh no, damn you, monosodium glutinate. Mm. Oh, that was a tough bit. Okay, hang on. Mm. Okay, they were tough, but not so bad. Okay, well, gotta be honest, not bad at all. I like that. It's expensive, though. I would certainly try and get it cheaper, but Jack Link's Meat Snacks Beef Jerky Original, you get a thumbs up. Yay! Well done. Right, on to the next thing then. We're going to go for something a bit sweeter this time. Snickers peanut butter squared. <laughs> there you go. Snickers peanut butter squared. Now with 25% more peanut butter. Um, I've seen these in a couple of videos on YouTube um, and I really wanted to try one. And then lo and behold, when I went to Tesco's, 
It was a Tesco's Extras, by the way. They happened to sell them, which I thought, ooh, I must try one. I love peanut butter. I love chocolate. I love chocolate and peanut butter. And I also like Snickers. What could possibly go wrong? Except for the fact that rather than get a full bar, you get these two little square bits. And this cost £1.80 as well. £1.80 for all this. I mean, Jesus. Again, I know it's imported. I'm sure most of it's tax and fuel costs and then the profit margins on top of it. But it's so expensive. But... Considering the beef jerky is really tasty, I'm going to finish the rest of that off, actually. <laughs> Damn you, monosodium glutamate. Mm. Glutamate, even, sorry. Oh, so more. Mm. But yeah, I really want to try this. So, before we do, packaging looks attractive enough. So, Snickers, we recognise that. Peanut butter is good. Squared. 25% more peanut butter. Not bad. Ooh, twist to close. Save one for later. <gasps> I might save one for later but i won't necessarily twist to close i don't understand like a lot of these um chocolate wrappers these days from branded chocolate like cadbury's and all that has now like resealable packets so you can like save the chocolate for later you know ration yourself and then it will help the packet will stay sealed better and help keep it preserved but it never bloody works whenever you try the resealant thing on it or at least for me anyway half the time i always mess it up or it just comes away and it just doesn't reseal so I never really understand it. I'm sure it works for some other people or well, most other people, but for me, I never get it right. I guess it's got something to do with how you open it. But whenever, even when I try to open it the proper way, I still mess it up. Oh, well, never mind. Right, Snickers peanut butter, 50.5 grams. Really? There's 50.5 grams in this? Oh, you're right. Oh, I, uh, that's more than, I don't know. I don't know what the average weight of a Snickers bar is. Hmm, I'll have to look it up. But that's, that's not too bad, I suppose. So squares filled with peanut butter, peanuts, caramel, and nougat covered in milk chocolate. Sounds great. Nutritional information. Oh, this is going to be bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, 495 calories. Ouch. 25.7 grams of fat. Oh, double ouch. Saturates 11.9. Triple ouch. Total carbohydrates 60 grams, of which nearly 50 of that is sugar. Fiber, 2 grams. Oh, that's all right. Then I suppose we all need a bit of fiber. Protein, 7.9 grams, not too bad. And salt, 0.3. Pretty bad, but again, it's chocolate, it's peanut butter. It's kind of expected. All right, ingredients, milk chocolate, sugar, cocoa butter, chocolate. Wait, what? Ingredients, milk chocolate, sugar, cocoa butter, chocolate. Is chocolate an ingredient to chocolate? I guess it is, I suppose. I suppose they've broken it down to milk chocolate, but then I'd have thought the sugar, the cocoa butter, and the semi-skim, or the skimmed milk, Oh, is it skimmed milk? Oh, it's not skimmed milk powder either. Oh, that's a good. So skimmed milk, sugar and cocoa butter. Surely that would just make chocolate. I guess what they mean by chocolate, they mean cocoa maybe, like cocoa matter or cocoa... Uh, oh, I forget what it's called now on the back of ingredients. Cocoa mass, that's it. Perhaps they just mean that. Uh, lact... Uh, what's that say? Oh, I can't read that. That's too small. Ah, forget it. Well, we know what the rest of the ingredients are. Oils, sugars, peanut butter, more oil, sugar, fats. Contains soy, milk, yeah, all the bad stuff. Right then, let's open her up and then let's have a look at it and see what it tastes like. Oh, it comes in two little squares. Oh, I quite like this, actually. I've got to be honest, it's not a bad design. Although I've covered it in beef jerky, <laughs> sadly, but never mind. A um, little bit soft in the hand, but that's because it's a bit warm, so the chocolate is melting, so I'm going to have to eat it quickly. But yeah, looking at this one better light hopefully yep, just a chocolate square really looks actually like a snickers bar but um in a square and a bit smoother on the outside and with more beef jerky on the side right then the ultimate moment of truth let's bite into it and see what it tastes like mm. oh god i can taste the peanut butter um hmm hmm that is, mm, it's hard to say. It does taste just like a normal Snickers bar, but they've just put in a load of peanut butter. Mmm. And peanuts, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. That is really nice. Oh, God. Mmm. It's chocolatey, but not too chocolatey. Very peanut buttery. And the nougat's there. It's actually like a really nice balance of all three. Not The only one that overpowers slightly is the peanut butter. But only just. There's like a really, really nice gentle combination of everything. It's actually very pleasant. The chocolate's not very sweet though. But that's okay. And the peanut butter. Mm, it's really nice. Not very thick though. 
Mm. I imagine this to be thicker, but it's because it's slightly warm, it might have melted it a bit. You know, softened it up and all that. That's really nice. Um, and the nougat at the bottom, you can taste it, but it doesn't, again, it's, it's quite, it's a bit of an undertaste, really, but. Mmm. No, I like that. That's very nice. Mmm. 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 That was just a Snickers bar with a lot of peanut butter in it, but it's really nice. I've got all the all the, the right ratios of ingredients, the right balance of ingredients. Oh, that was really nice. I like that. Well done, Snickers peanut butter. Where are you? Mm, very nice. If you like peanut butter and you like chocolate and you like Snickers, try this. Very, very nice. Expensive though. £1.80 is very expensive. I'll try and get it cheaper, but even so, not bad at all. Well done, Snickers. Well done. I enjoyed that. That was very pleasant. Mmm. Mmm, delicious. Right. Our final food item for tonight. And this is a classic. I've always wanted to try these. And these were on sale at Tesco's as well. Originally £7. Oh no, originally £8, I think, actually. But went down to 5 It is the All-American Classic. Twinkies. Oh, yes. I have seen these so many times recently when I've been to video game conventions and other things. I have always wanted to try the legendary Twinkie. And then they were selling them at Tesco's, but I just couldn't justify buying a box of them for eight quid. It's still pricey at five, but when I saw it for five quid, I was like, no, I'm sorry. That's the best opportunity to get a box of Twinkies. So I've done it. Here they are, Twinkies. Golden sponge cake with creamy filling. Oh, man, these, these are like American staple. What's weird, though, is actually I think quite recently, a few years ago, um, the business that used to make these, the original people that made Twinkies, I can't remember who made them, whether it was actually Twinkies themselves or just a food company that owned the brand. They went out of business um, and the Twinkies temporarily disappeared for a bit, I think, off the American market. But then they were brought back uh, by another food company that bought uh, uh, the rights to it or the licensing rights or whatever to Twinkies. And that's why it says the sweetest comeback in the history of ever, because it was revived by, I assume, Hostess. So that's really cool. So they actually came back. So I'm glad about that. So yeah, Twinkies. Always wanted to try one of these. Um, the box is quite flimsy, but I love the packaging design. Really, really cool. Uh, yep, same on the side, really. Uh, upside down again. Yep, pretty plain. Right then, let's have a look at the ingredients then, because this, uh, this is what I'm most interested at, because I've got to admit, this is probably going to be the most cheapest gold sponge cake with the cheapest cream in there. So let's see how they've done it. Uh, wheat flour, flour, niacin, iron, vitamin. Oh, it's fortified flour as well. Well, that's interesting. Uh, water, sugar, corn syrup, again, high fructose corn syrup. Oh, God, they love their corn syrup. And now we've got high fructose corn syrup. Oh, we're really stepping up the game here. Partially hydro uh, hydrogenated vegetable shortening. Not sure what that is. Oh, but it tells, it tells us soybean, cottonseed oil, canola oil, beef fat. Yummy. Eggs, dextrose, soya lecithin. Raising agents, sodium bicarbonate, E-numbers, lovely. Uh, although sodium bicarbonate is a basic baking ingredient, I guess, or a ba basic baking uh, essential. Uh, sodium and pyrophosphate. <laughs> Not sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, cornstarch and monocalcium phosphate, modified cornstarch. <gasps> modified cornstarch! No, not genetic foods. Genetically modified. Yeah, it even says there on the bottom. Damn you, Twinkies! Don't want to eat you now. Ugh. I know there's like a lot of arguments to say that genetically modified food is good. But personally, I'm not a fan of it. I really don't. Although, having said that, a lot of food you eat these days have modified ingredients in some form or another. Um, so unless you're really rich or you're very picky about your food, it's quite hard to avoid these days. So even though I say I don't like it, I am being a bit of a hypocrite. But yeah, I try and avoid it if possible. Um, I, I, there's, I, I don't know. I just don't trust it. I mean, OK, there's, there's not a lot of research out there to say that it's not good for you. But there's some possible scenarios where it could actually cause problems. But they've yet to be tested and yet to be found out. So... It's up in the air, so I'm not saying don't eat it, but I'm just, if you're a bit concerned about it, I'd stay away from it until more information is given out. But hey, uh, glucose, whey, glycerin, soybean, glycerin. Ooh, I wonder if it's got nitroglycerin. Perhaps if we throw them really hard against the wall, they'll explode. <gasps> Ooh. Uh, soybean oil, salts, polyoxyethylene, poly I think. Sorbitan mono, oh, it's just random E numbers and stuff. Yep, sounds cheap and nasty, but I love it. So, right, let's open it up. And let's find and see one of these Twinkies in action. Well, I say in action. Let's just have a look at it. Right. Oh, right. it's inside the box. There they are. And there we go. A Twinkie. Wow, it's moist as well. You can actually tell from the packaging on the inside. It's oily and moist. Oh, God. 
Uh, ooh, and there's the three, I guess they inject like three squirts of cream into it or something. That would explain the three white dots. Who knows? Weird. Uh, well, at least the packaging's not just, you know, plain plastic wrapper. At least they put the branding on it, I guess. That's kind of neat. Uh, about sort of the right size, I think. All right then, let's try and open her up. Well, I'll have to open it up uh, with, with the two hands. Oh no, I might be able to... Actually, I can use my teeth. There we go. Let's see if I can... Oh, nope. Yep. Nope. Oh no. Ah! I'm going to have to bite into it some more. Ah! There we go. It's probably actually safer to eat the plastic wrapping than the, the Twinkies itself, but oh well, whatever. Come on then, out you go. Come on, squeeze her out. That's it, there we go. See, she's ready to go. Mm. No, don't drop it on the floor! Whew. That was close. Inevitably, I've probably dropped it in some beef jerky as well. In fact, yes, I have. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, should have saved the beef jerky till last. Right, how does it feel in the hand? Very, very, very oily, very greasy. I kid you not. Um, it's, it's, yeah, there we go, it's better focused. Yeah, it's nice, it's golden. Well, I say it's nice. Oh, it's more beef jerky. Go away, beef jerky. Jesus. Um, yep, it's crumbly. It's very greasy, very oily everywhere. It's really slimy to the touch. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Mmm. Mmm. Very oily. Very sweet. The cream is very strange. It's not fresh cream, as that's probably apparent. It tastes like... Well, I don't know how... I don't really know how to put it. It's sweet, but it's also quite sickly. And um, the texture of it is like... It's if you if you're putting cream on something, imagine you've got an injury like X. But if you if you've burnt yourself or you've got eczema or something, and you put hydrocortisone cream on it or any form of soothing burn cream or whatever to uh, to, to to you know to put over the burn or the eczema to you know soothe its itchiness and rawness. You know the feel of that cream when you feel it with your hands. It's really oily and it's really like slimy and slippery and smooth. That's kind of how it tastes. <laughs> Not that I've tasted hydro hydrocortisone cream or, 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 or septic cream, what's it called? Um, in the grey tub? Oh, I forget it. Um, yeah, it kind of tastes how it feels, if that makes any sense. Hmm. It tastes like what I'd imagine hydrocortisone cream to taste. It's got the same slimy texture to it. The sponge is just dripping in the oil. Very sweet sponge. Very... Um, it's not crumbly, actually. It kind of like, it kind of like dissolves in the mouth. Mmm. Mmm. It's very dense. And it sticks together. It doesn't crumble in your mouth. It's all stuck. The oil is what's keeping it together. Mmm. It's got like a sort of, yeah, like a golden syrupy taste. So it's basically sponge. Imagine a cheap sponge cake. And they've literally saturated it with oil. Like, it's pouring with oil. And it's keeping it glued together in your mouth. So it doesn't crumble in your mouth. Or it's not dry. It's very, very moist and very oily. And then they've put, like, golden syrup flavouring. I guess that's the corn syrup. That's what it's tasting of. The sweetness, um, it tastes like corn. It, it, it tastes like uh, sweet corn. But highly processed and compressed into some sort of goopy stuff. Um, imagine the cereal corn pops that Kellogg's used to do years ago. Kellogg's corn pops. You know, it had that distinct sweet taste to it, which I guess was the corn syrup and the, the fact that it was sweet corn or breaded and, well, not breaded, but cooked and, and fluffy and all that sort of stuff. I don't know how they make sweet corn, but it's got that heavy aroma on it. A heavy aroma, heavy aroma and heavy taste to it. It just tastes like sugary sweet corn sponge cake that's dripping with oil the cream yeah the cream is similar as well the cream's got like a a sweet corny taste to it as well so i guess it's just corn syrup and sugar and i guess leftover hydrocortisone cream it's it's weird it's not unpleasant by any means it's not nasty but if you don't like if you're if it's very very greasy and oily if you're not a fan of greasy oily foods i'd stay away from it this is exceptionally bad for you. And the cream is is not like whipped cream. It's like basically corn syrup cream. It's it's sugarified corn syrup, sweet corn syrup. Uh, uh, it made into a white cream, basically. So, yeah, it's weird. But it's not unpleasant, but it's it's not quite what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a bit spongier and less oily. 
But, uh, oh, well, whatever, there you go. Um, right, that's my take on Twinkies, and that is all the food I'm going to eat today. I might eat this one, actually, because, it, again, it's what they put in it that makes it all uh, addictive and additive, I suppose. All the additives they put in it makes you want to eat more. Um, no modest sodium glutamate, though. Uh, glutamate, even, sorry. I keep saying glutamate. Glutamate, that's what it is. Um, there's no monosodium sodium glutamate in it, but, yeah, exceptionally oily, exceptionally greasy. Very tasty. Of, it, it tastes of, like, sweet corn syrup, basically. So imagine golden syrup. But it's not all sugar, it's sweet corn syrup. Um, so sort of try and get the, the, the taste of sweet corn in your mouth and then imagine it as a syrup. That's basically it. And then the cream is, yeah, the cream has just that texture of hydrocortisone cream and, and antiseptic cream. It's really weird. It tastes as it feels. It's really slimy and smooth. And again, this distinct taste of sweet corn syrup. Very strange, but not unpleasant. But not, yeah, it, it's one of those ones where you're either going to like it or you hate it, I think. But there you go. So that's that. Twinkies, leftover beef jerky at the bottom, and I'm dropping everything onto the floor. Well, not onto the floor, onto the, uh, on the surface. Right then, that's that. So I'm going to say thank you very much for watching if you have. Apologies that it wasn't up to my usual standard. I'm just very, very tired. Quite a lot of work to do. I have done a bit tonight, so I'm not completely skiving, but I'm giving myself a break because I'm tired now and I need to go to bed. Well, the only times I could do these videos until Christmas, I have to do it before I go to bed. So I'm not altogether uh, alert or anything. And that beef jerky, that monosodium glutamate, damn it. Oh, so tasty and addicting. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to have to buy like packets and packets of that now. I'm going to be like broke in like two days. I'm just living off beef, beef jerky and Twinkie bars. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. So, A Taste of America. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I shall carry on with Half-Life probably Friday night. I'll finish off Half-Life and then we'll move on to Half-Life 2. So yeah. Oh, and if you've got any ideas for foods that you want me to eat as well, or want me to try out, uh, let me know in the comments section. I'll see if I can get hold of them in the future, and then we'll, we'll eat those and see what they uh, see what they taste like. Right then, have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the next vid.